what are some strategies to prevent surgical site infection? Now, I've done a talk on surgical site infection, but today we are going to dive deep, way deep, into the strategies to prevent surgical site infection as it is a major cause of morbidity and even mortality across the world in surgical patients. Let's do it. Welcome back to Citizen Surgeon. My name is Dr. Eric Pearson, and today we're talking about all things preventing surgical site infection. Now, I have done a talk, as I said, on surgical site infection before, and what did we go over? Well, we talked about how to define it. We talked about the risk factors. We talked about how to make the diagnosis, and of course, we talked about treatment. But today, we are gonna be talking about prevention. Now, what does prevention of surgical site infection look like? All right, well, the first thing, I think this is totally required reading, are the WHO guidelines for the prevention of surgical site infection. And today, we're gonna go through some of these, especially the ones with high quality and moderate quality evidence. There are also some recommendations we're not gonna talk about, as it had a little bit lower quality of evidence, but is certainly in the guideline. So check it out, give it a read. I think this is required reading for anybody that's taking care of surgical patients anywhere in the world. And I'll put a link to that article in the description below. So there are a couple of things that we might not think about entirely when we are considering surgical site infection. And the first thing is, boom, right there. You gotta have a clean, operating room. Now, after every procedure, we have environmental services come in. They give the operating room a deep clean, give it a nice scrub, especially all high touch areas so that we can have a nice, clean, safe environment to perform surgical operations with the lowest risk of SSI possible. And when I say SSI, I'm talking about surgical site infection. Now, what's the next thing you need? Well, you need clean instruments, and these instruments need to be sanitized correctly. And we have a sterile processing department, and there is one in every hospital, and they're responsible for making sure that all instruments are not only organized and ready, but they're sterilized and processed so that they are the safest they could possibly be for our patients. Okay, so those are two things, but now we're going to get in specifically to talk about the patient. And when we talk about the patient, we think about preventing surgical site infection in three different areas. One is preoperative, two is perioperative, or all those decisions around the operation, and finally is postoperative. So what does preoperative look like? Now, first, remember that these are general recommendations. For some surgical procedures and some operations in different specialties, for example, cardiac or orthopedic, where we're doing total joint arthroplasties or spine, there are different recommendations to decrease the risk of surgical site infection even more. And that might be particular outfits or, or head coverings worn by the surgeon that could be using a different type of antibiotic prophylaxis, that could be uh, getting rid of MRSA in the nares. Okay, so I'm gonna be given some general recommendations, but for some of these surgical subspecialties like spine, even neurological surgery, uh, orthopedics with total joints, and then cardiac, there are additional recommendations uh, to think about. So let's get into the preoperative strategies for preventing surgical site infection. Now, when we're looking specifically at the patient, what can the patient do to lower the risk of SSI, okay? Well, optimize health. Be in the best possible health, okay? So if we have cardiac disease, how can we optimize that? If we have cardiac failure, how can we optimize that? If we have diabetes, how can we get our glucose under control? If we have a history of respiratory distress or emphysema or bronchitis, how do we optimize that? How can we decrease our weight to get to a healthy weight so that we can have a safe surgery and then recover quicker? Okay, so the general thing we're going to talk about with a lot of these strategies is health optimization. So let's say that we're doing a preoperative visit 
with a patient and we want to discuss strategies to lower the risk of SSI in their upcoming surgery. Well, just like in a recent video on the risks of colorectal cancer, there are things we can control, some modifiable risk factors, and things that we really can't control. Well, when it comes to surgical site infection, of the preoperative stuff, what can we not control? Well, look here. I mean, look at all these. Well, the only one we really can't control is age. So if we take age out and we have these other risk factors, someone who's obese has a five times increased likelihood of having a surgical site infection if the body fat percentage is increased. Someone with diabetes has a three times risk of a surgical site infection and smokers have double the risk of surgical site infection. Okay, so by decreasing our body fat percentage, by managing and controlling our diabetes, and by quitting or stopping smoking, we can dramatically reduce that risk of surgical site infection. And these are all preoperative strategies. Well, what are some other decisions preoperative that the surgeon and the surgical team is going to make? Okay, well, we talked about health optimization. We talked about diabetes management, reduction in obesity, and stopping smoking. But how about bathing? So the WHO recommends bathing preoperatively to reduce the amount of skin flora as this may be associated with a risk of surgical site infection. Now, when we look at the literature, we don't see any evidence that bathing with antimicrobial soap or a chlorhexidine scrub does reduce the risk of surgical site infection. One of the problems when we look at these meta-analysis is there are some flaws in these trials. So can we really say that for sure? Now, one thing we know is that preoperative showers, preoperative bathing can reduce the amount of skin flora, but is that directly associated with surgical site infection? It looks like when we look at all these trials, then perhaps there is no direct relationship. However, it's still a recommendation. Now, if we go back to our list, we can see here MRSA decolonization. So there is significant evidence in neurological surgery, spine surgery, uh, orthopedic surgery, that decreasing MRSA colonization in the nose with a muperosin ointment would decrease the risk of a surgical site infection postoperatively. Now, one thing that they mentioned in the guidelines is other factors need to be taken into account. So what is the local colonization of MRSA? Does the patient have any previous MRSA infections or staph aureus infections? So taking a look at that risk and then knowing, should we use a 2% muperosin ointment with a chlorhexidine bath preoperatively to reduce our risk of surgical site infection. Okay, so that was the preoperative strategies. Well, now let's go to the perioperative strategies. So around the operation, what decisions can we make to reduce the risk of surgical site infection? And there are several of these. So not necessarily in order, but let's go through each of these bullet points. So the first is an alcohol-based skin prep with chlorhexidine. So this is an example of one of these chlorhexidine scrub sponges. All right, they do have a particular area of chlorhexidine that they can cover and it depends on the size of the sponge. Okay, sometimes if I'm doing a chest or an abdomen, I'll have to use two of these to get the correct coverage. All right, so it's been shown in multiple studies that if we compare alcohol-based chlorhexidine with povidine iodine or non-alcohol based wash that we can have reduced surgical site infection. So if we are in a position that we can use an alcohol based chlorhexidine solution, then we should be doing that. When do I not do this? Well, I almost always use a chlorhexidine scrub, but the areas where I don't is if I have a neonate, okay, that has immature skin, I don't use chlorhexidine because there is a good risk of burning. So I'll use povidine iodine scrub in that case. Also, when I'm doing operations on the face, I don't want chlorhexidine to get into the eye at all because it can cause burns. And so in that case, I will use like an ophthalmic 
Povidone iodine scrub to make sure that I don't cause any injury to the eye. Now, perioperative antibiotic in timing. This is incredibly important. If an antibiotic is recommended for that particular surgery, it should be given within 60 minutes of the incision. Now, the WHO guidelines will say within 120 minutes, okay? And there are different guidelines throughout the world that give a little bit different time points. 60 minutes is the one that we follow in, my, in the hospital that I work in and in many hospitals throughout the United States. The one star to this would be in some antibiotics that have longer half-lives, for example, vancomycin, we may want to give this before that 60-minute time period, might be up to two hours before incision. And if we do this, we can lower the risk of surgical site infection. If an antibiotic is indicated, we certainly don't want to give that antibiotic after we've made a skin incision, so always needed to be given before. Now, how about hair removal? So, the current recommendations are if you don't need to remove hair in the operative area, you should not remove it, okay? If you do need to remove hair, so sometimes if I have a teenager, I'm doing an abdominal operation and there's a lot of hair, then you want to remove it with hair clippers, but you do not want to shave the area. Shaving the area leads to injury to the epidermis, and that's going to lead to an increased risk of having a surgical site infection. The next one to talk about is mechanical bowel preparation. So what is that? Well, that is a combination of an oral medication. So for example, polyethylene glycol with perhaps Seta, and that's given before the operation to clean out the colon, and that's going to decrease the risk of surgical site infection in colorectal operations. So we don't need to do mechanical bowel prep for every operation, but just for colorectal operations, if we do a mechanical bowel prep with preoperative antibiotics, we're able to decrease that risk of surgical site infection. Now, surgical hand prep. Okay, well, there's a few different ways that we can wash our hands as surgeons. And there is specific technique to washing your hands. So you start with the tips of your fingers and you go down to the elbows, not letting that water come back to your hands. So we learn that technique, scrub techs learn that technique so that we can have nice clean hands to operate. And we've known since the days of Lister that cleaning your hands will decrease the risk of surgical site infection. Now the next one here is adequate oxygenation and studies have found that if the oxygen saturations are maintained at a higher percentage, we are able to decrease the risk of surgical site infection, and this is particularly important in colorectal surgery patients. So that is preoperative oxygenation, perioperative oxygenation, as well as postoperative oxygenation in that recovery unit. And finally, normothermia. So one of the most important jobs, especially as a pediatric surgeon, is maintaining normothermia or normal body temperature. Now, we do this by sometimes using warmed fluids, but we do this by keeping the operating room warm for children. It's also kept warm for patients that have less protection, like less epithelial covering, for example, a burn patient. If the operating room is cooler, and for other surgeries or for adults, then often we'll warm the patient with warm fluids or perhaps a bear hugger, so kind of an air blanket that goes over the patient and keeps them warm, or sometimes mats under the patient that will keep them warm. And when I am picking out a temperature, we're looking at 36 degrees Celsius. So if we're gonna stay normothermic, we need to make sure we're above 36 degrees Celsius. And so that's a good review of our perioperative strategies to limit the risk of a surgical site infection. Well, what are the post-operative strategies? Well, the first one is to stop our perioperative antibiotics at a particular time point. So typically we don't want antibiotics to go for longer than 24 hours. And often if we are doing a clean contaminated case, we just need one single dose preoperatively within 60 minutes before the incision and that's it, okay? If we're doing a clean case with a prosthetic, perhaps antibiotics up to 24 hours, it's determined by the institution and of course the surgeon, but 
to limit those antibiotics at 24 hours will stop giving excess antibiotics stop resistance in the community, make our antibiotics more effective. One of the interesting recommendations that came out, and as, as a surgeon, this is something I'm always anxious about, is, man, I'm leaving a drain in. Do I need to continue antibiotics because of that drain? And the current recommendations are that if a drain is left in, and this was a clean case, that additional antibiotics are not necessary despite having that drain. So giving our perioperative dose of antibiotics if that is needed, and then despite having a drain, no antibiotics are needed after that, and that's a current recommendation by the WHO. And then finally, I've done a bunch of talks on wound dressings, wound care, wound healing, all right? And so there are many advanced dressings. We have collagen dressings, we have hydrocolloid dressings, and of course, we have silver impregnated dressings. So, None of these advanced dressings are necessary if the wound's been closed primarily, okay? And especially there is concern that if we use silver impregnated dressings in clean wounds, we could start developing bacteria that are resistant to silver, and that's gonna defeat the purpose of having a silver impregnated dressing that is antibacterial. I hope you enjoyed that today. We went through preventive strategies for surgical site infection. We talked about that you had to keep the operating room clean and the, and the instrument sterile, all right? We went through preoperative strategies, perioperative strategies, and postoperative strategies in order to reduce the risk of surgical site infection to get it as low as possible. If you liked it, give it a share, give it a like, subscribe to the channel. That lets me know that I'm doing the right thing. I'm providing value. If you have any suggestions or any questions, leave it in the comment section below. I love it when you ask questions and I get to engage with you guys. As always, stay safe, study hard. I'll see you next time.